So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch gears and, and give a, a, a talk that's sort of in a parallel vein. So she, she uh, Dr. Skalski talked a lot about ultrasound and, and sort of technical optimization of things. And I'm going to focus um, on a similar thing with MRI. And the reason it is is because I think pelvis MRI can be quite challenging. It's challenging for both technologists and it's challenging for radiologists. And, and I've thought a lot about why it's so challenging. The first is it's not really the pulse sequences. You know, I, I'm, I'm an MRI nerd, and, and I love every new pulse sequence that's the best thing since sliced bread. But the truth is, and, and you know this, is that really the, the cornerstone of pelvis MRI is a very simple fast spin echo that's been around for 20, 30 years since, since MRI has been started. And so, but really, the, the reason why it's challenging is the scans are tailored to answer the clinical question, just, just as ultrasound is tailored to answer the clinical question. And, and unless you and the technologists and, and the people who are establishing your MR protocols are all on the same phase, are all on the same page with this, um, it's, it's not going to be as good as it's going to be. And these are very simple choices in imaging technique. They don't require very advanced knowledge in physics and other things. And they're actually, and I will try and argue through the talk, is that a lot of these technical choices are actually clinical choices. How much resolution do you need? How sharp do the images need to be? How, how, how much zoomed in or, 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 or not zoomed in should the images be? What angle should it be so that I can see? So, and that requires communication with you and technologists, and, and we'll go over a little bit of that. So, first thing I want to talk about is we're going to start with the basics, which is actually the T2 fast spin echo. And I say the T2, the fast spin echo is really the cornerstone of what we do. Um, almost everything you can see on the, image, on the female pelvis and, and judge from it really comes from these pulse sequences because they're high anatomic resolution. And really, a lot of the questions that we ask in pelvis imaging is really anatomic questions, okay? And the important thing is, and we'll talk about it before, is that the T2s should be obtained without fat saturation. So uh, I think um, with fat saturation, it actually causes a lot of confusion. And really, it's this detailed anatomy. The second thing we should get out of there in the beginning is that there's not just one T2, right? So T2-weighted imaging is, is, is very important, but we also do these very large surveys, which are these single-shot fast spin echo sequences that are very fast. They just take a couple of hundred milliseconds to acquire every slice, but they tend to be a little blurry, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But that's to look for lymph nodes or other masses outside the pelvis, and we also will do these very high-resolution fast spin echo pulse sequences which tend to be long. They can take several minutes to acquire each one, and this is a sagittal view of the uterus, but this gives you nice, detailed view of the anatomy. So with that in mind, I want to talk a little bit about how these T2-weighted images work. And so this is, we're going to take a break, a small technical break right now. And I'm going to talk about five things which are actually very simple technical factors which aren't you know, pre-programmed very well into most scanners. And these are things that you can change and um, you can make the suggestion to change with discussion with your technologists. But the, in order to understand that, I want to talk quickly and, and review about what a spin echo is, right? And so we talked about this is way back from physics. And so if you remember when we do an MRI acquisition, the first thing we do is an excitation. And if you recall, all of the signal initially just completely disappears. And actually, um, MRI would not be very practical. But what they found out, you know, maybe 60 years ago, was that if you did a refocusing, if you refocus those spins into an echo, sometime later, at a time known as your echo time, they actually all come back together again, which is really, really cool. And what this does is it allows you to conserve the very small MRI signal so that you can see it, and it also lets you set what your T2 weighting is, so you can decide where that echo time is going to be. Now, the one challenge with this is doing this one at a time is really kind of slow and, and kind of it take, would take a long time to scan one person doing a simple spin echo. And so they came up with this thing called the fast spin echo, which means that you just keep refocusing things over and over and over again. And so you get another echo, another echo, and another echo. And what are these echoes? Each echo is actually one of your phase encode points. And so you, when you acquire the image, it's basically if you acquire enough of these, you can acquire as many images as you want. Now, the one thing to keep in mind when you're choosing this is that this echo train length, which is the number of echoes you get before you start again, is an adjustable parameter. So this is something you can ask the technologist to play with because there's no free lunch here. Although it makes things faster to just acquire everything at once, as you acquire more and more echoes, your signal goes down and everything gets blurry. And I'll show you this here. And so this is an example. This is a, a coronal view um, through the pelvis, this is actually the levator ani muscles, and you can see here with an echo train length of seven, which is just seven echoes of every excitation, nothing else has changed versus 16 echoes with every excitation. You can actually see that it gets considerably blurrier 
um, at 16 versus 7. So again, if your images are too blurry, and, and images are too blurry, that's a clinical question. If they're too blurry for what you need to do, um, this is one of the parameters that you and the technologists working together have the ability to change. Thank you.